Does it feel like things are constantly happening to pull you down? Maybe it's health, job, money, and there's a sense of like, wow, I can't seem to get ahead. And you find yourself saying things like, I wish I could just get a break. Well, if that's you, please listen up. And if that's not you, maybe you know someone else in your life who has felt that way. So listen and also listen now and also share this with them now. Welcome to the Create Your Vibrant Life podcast. If you are the type of person who's a visionary, who wants more from life, who has high dreams and aspirations, wants to evolve spiritually and impact the world, and in the meantime, have time and energy to do the things that are important to you, then whatever you do, tune into this podcast every week. I'm your host, Padma Ali. I help stressed out overachievers find clarity and awaken to their highest potential using my unique NEW, New You Blueprint. I combine neuropsychology, energy healing, and wisdom to create long-lasting changes, and that's what I bring to you in this podcast. I've had a successful career in the field of psychology for over 20 plus years, along with extensive training and experience in ancient healing practices, which I now bring to my coaching work with my clients. And that's what inspired me to do this podcast, to bring this knowledge and wisdom to the world. So I'm incredibly grateful for you to be a part of this journey with me, and I'm so excited to serve you. So welcome. What's up, visionary? Welcome to episode number 22 of Create Your Vibrant Life podcast. And this is your host, Padma Ali. And today's topic is, I never seem to get ahead. Will I ever get a break in my life? See, I was hesitant in writing down this podcast episode because Chances are, if you are a visionary and whatever I'm going to share with you may or may not 100% resonate with you because if you are a visionary, you often find a way to get out of these things. Like you don't stay stuck in that for too long. At least that's what I've experienced in my life and with my clients who are very highly successful. However, these are things that I have noticed that everyone kind of goes through. It's almost like a rite of passage before they can get to the next level. And also, chances are, you might actually know someone who is struggling right now, because there's a lot happening in the world, isn't it? So I decided to go ahead, and I often make decisions from guidance. And it felt right to do this episode. So here it is. (laughs) And again, if you find someone in your life or if you have somebody in your life who could really use this information, please pass it on because I think it's going to be very valuable because obviously, even though it's titled, I never seem to get ahead, I'm going to give you suggestions or transformational questions that will help move you from feeling stuck to where you could possibly be. So... Have you seen this either with yourself or with people in your life where it feels like they're in crisis after crisis after crisis after crisis? They have an accident, then they break a leg, then they lose a job. The list just continues and continues. And if you ask them, they will say things like, I wish life would give me a break. Or if only I had the money to pay for that. Or, you know, if when I land that job, things will be different. When I get into that relationship, that will be different. There's always like, if this happens, my life would be so much better. And It may seem extreme, like we all have versions of that, don't we? Hey, by the way, 
Thank you so much for the amazing response this podcast is getting. The last time I checked, there were we had over 1,300 downloads, and it's only been four months since I started this podcast. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for those amazing reviews. You all are awesome. Thank you for being such amazing, loyal listeners and sharing this podcast. Because I know you want to help people. If you're following my podcast, I know you're the type of person who likes to help people. So I know that somewhere it's getting shared. (laughs) So thank you so much. And if you haven't left a review, please pause this episode, leave a review and listen up again. So, you know, how many times do we say we'll do it later, right? So please pause this episode, leave a review now and come back and listen to it. So anyways, back to the episode. Yeah, we all have some versions of that, haven't we? We've experienced that or we know people where it feels like, oh my God, like, is this ever going to end? Have you fully realized that if you are in that place of finding yourself asking for a break, you're probably operating from circumstances, aren't you? And If you're getting triggered by what I'm saying, please stay with me because I'm going to give you some really important transformational nuggets that you can take with you. And you might want to actually tell me like if you're like, no, that's you don't really understand. You really don't know anything about what I'm dealing with or what I've dealt with. Yes, you're absolutely right, my friend. I know nothing. I know nothing about your specific circumstances and how bad it is. And what I'm inviting you to ponder is this. What are you exactly focusing on? What are you exactly focusing on when things are going so-called wrong in your life? Let me explain, okay? You might have noticed this happening to you or may not have noticed this happening to you. It's happened to me for sure. Something happens like you get a flat tire or you can't find your wallet or your kid spills stuff right when you're just getting out of the door and you're like, oh, my God. And then you get annoyed, frazzled, you get overwhelmed and get caught up in the emotions. And then you're trying your best to keep your head above the water, so to speak, and start to get a handle of the situation Then something else happens and something else happens. Someone cuts you off. Someone's rude to you. Your boss says something. Something else happens again and something else happens again. Like the list continues. By the end of the day, you're literally like, holy cow, what just happened today? Can this just stop? I'm done. I'm so happy for this day to end. First of all, if you've experienced that, you're not alone. You've heard of the phrase, right? When it rains, it pours. Yeah. (laughs) But why is that phrase even there? That's what I'm inviting you to ponder upon. Like, this is where I'm going with this episode. If you haven't yet guessed that. I used to be that way. And I've seen other people be in that that same place, especially even my really highly successful clients have found themselves at some point or the other in this place, which is why I was saying sometimes this is a rite of passage to get to the other side. Can you just see, right? Like even just recognizing that, like how powerful that is, right? And where that is, is going, is like circumstances are dictating everything that's happening. Like you're so caught up in the circumstances, you can't see beyond that. And we just associate that, oh, my God, like I'm having a bad day or a bad period. (laughs) When I was very sick for those many years, as you've heard me talk in the other episodes, I was like, this is just a bad time in my life. No, there is other things now. You know, obviously, hindsight is always 2020. There's more to it. But I'm inviting you to start to shift that now. You know, I'll share an example with you. I'll share a life event that happened to me not too long ago. I had my son and I was a new, obviously, as a new mother, there's always this anxiety about like, oh, my God, is he getting enough to eat? And I was nursing and I remember struggling so much with breastfeeding. It was a nightmare at that time. 
And this was supposed to be this easy thing, right? Like you're just supposed to be easily, like you're supposed to just easily figure out a way to nurse, to breastfeed. And it didn't happen. Not only that, like he didn't, he had very, you know, if you're, if you are a mom or if you are a woman or if you have, if you have a child yourself, you know, like those, that first few weeks or months can be crazy. So he didn't latch on. He was having a hard time breastfeeding. I got mastitis, which then, <laughs> this is this is really ridiculous, but you'll see. You'll see where I'm going with this. My mastitis turned into a 12-inch abscess in my breast, which had to be removed surgically. I had to be hospitalized for a few days, leaving my eight-week-old baby behind. The baby couldn't come with me. And all this happened in the middle of a snowstorm. <laughs> I'm not making this shit up. Like, it's real. Like, it was one thing after another, after another, after another. And um, by the time, like, you know, the abscess was discovered, it was really late. Like, it was, and I had to go to the hospital. It was in the middle of a snowstorm. I remember my husband driving us to the hospital in the middle of a snowstorm, and my mom was with the baby at home. He wasn't even taking things from a bottle at that point. So it was, needless to say, it was a nightmare. I'm laughing about it now. But at that point, I was just consumed with anxiety and overwhelm. And like, this thing was supposed to be natural. Like, why am I dealing with this? And what is going on? You can see, right? There was just such a caught up sensation of being in that circumstance and not feeling like things are going to be let up anytime soon. Here's even more. I'm just going to go with the story. It's really, you know, as I'm talking about it, it's kind of like, holy cow, like this is, does, does this really happen? But more than that, I find it humorous now that I have some space from it. So <laughs> I have this surgery and I don't do well with medication. And they gave me some pain meds, which I said I don't want. But the doctors and the nurses were like, no, 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 you need this. You've just had this big surgery. They gave me pain meds and I had a huge reaction to it, but it was such a bad reaction that at the end of it, the nurses were like, um, I'll just do what you tell me works for you and what doesn't, because they were they were they really got scared with <laughs> the amount of reaction. I was like, you know, nonstop throwing up. And this is random stories. So I don't need to go too much into it. But what I'm saying is. It just didn't let up. It just continued and continued. And this baby could not nurse and could not take a bottle. So we had to feed him with a dropper like a baby bird. I mean, this is my son now who eats like a champion. <laughs> but at that point, and he could not swallow. He had so many like structural issues and who knows what was happening at that point. It's all the past. It's done. It's not happening anymore. But it's funny to really see how caught up I was in that circumstance thinking it will never change. And it's so different now. But at that point, I remember asking the universe, wow, why is this happening to me? This is supposed to be this natural thing. Like, why is this not natural? Why, why is it not easy? And I know for a fact that I am not alone. Not the breastfeeding part, but what I'm talking about is this begging the universe or God or whatever you want to call it. Like, give me a break. Give me a break. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that, does it? We just associate having gone through circumstances as I'm having a bad day, I'm having a bad period, but it's not just that, is it? And here's the piece. I'm by no means saying that you could have prevented things. Could I have prevented the breast abscess from happening? I don't know. I don't know. But here's the thing. What I'm inviting you to ponder upon now is where is your focus when the first bad thing in parenthesis happened? When he couldn't nurse, where was my attention? And I can tell you, you know, in the past, my attention was always like, is the other shoe going to drop? When good things happen, oh my God, like something bad's going to happen. Or this is happening, something bad's going to happen even more. Where? Am I focused? What am I focusing on? What's my attention on? And that's that's what I'm inviting you to start to think. If you lose your wallet, what is your thought? What is your emotion? What are you focusing on now? 
right? And that is the piece you want to start to think about shifting. Now, can you see how powerful this is? This simple thing, and I'll explain more about why this is so powerful. Is your attention on like, this is a bad thing that's happening, more bad things are going to happen, or you feel anxious, you give in to those emotions, and last week's episode was all about that. What happens when you don't manage your emotions? Can you see how this is all a build up from the past episodes as well? So if you haven't listened to any of my previous episodes, I would highly recommend that you go back and start from the beginning and listen. You'll start to see like a theme emerging in some form where it all connects. So when something happens, I'm going to call it bad in parentheses because there is no bad or good thing. It's always our interpretation of whether it's good or bad. So if there's a bad thing in parentheses that happened, what is your thought? What is your reaction? Where are you focused? What are you focused on? What is your attention on? Are you just taking a deep breath and saying, okay, this is happening. Let me accept this. Let me see what can happen from here. Or are you resorting to frustration and anger and annoyance and thoughts like, I always get the raw end of the deal. Why did things happen to only to me? Why can't I get a break? Why can't this be different? And can you see now how stuck you are in your circumstances? And that's not where you want to be, do you? And by now, you probably already have realized that what you're focusing on is that it's not working, right? You're focusing on, oh my God, like my whatever my life is, it's in a bad place, it's not working, is it? Let me rephrase that. That didn't come out very articulately. I'm recording this <laughs> at 5 a.m. in the morning. If you followed me on social media by now, you, you would know that I record my podcast at the most oddest hours. It's like when my house is most quiet. So bear with me as I repeat that sentence again. You're realizing that whatever you're focusing on, like, oh, my God, like, this is bad. This is not going to work out. Like, everything bad's going to happen is not working, is it? That's what I meant to say. And sooner or later, you're going to realize that when you do that, everything is going to go downhill even further. So most people think, ah, once this problem is solved, it'll be better. Once I have the money, once this relationship is in a better place, once I have that job, once my circumstances change, it'll be better. And if you are in that boat, thinking that if only this change, that will make me happier, my life will be better. Think again. Think again. Have you ever fully considered that it's actually the other way around? Where being happy, being at peace, an inner well-being no matter what, no matter what your circumstances are, that is what will create the life that you want. Why? This is the piece I wanted to share with you. Because when you raise your vibrations of being happy, being, being okay no matter what, accepting, accepting where your situations where you are in your life, it puts you in a higher frequency. It puts you in a state of, I'm okay no matter what puts you in a state of well-being. It puts you in a state of peace. And just just forget the vibrations, forget the woo, right? Forget, forget that. Just for a minute, when you are at peace, when you're in a state of like, okay, this is happening to me. I'm just accepting this. This is how I feel. I accept that. And you go, come from that place of radical acceptance. How do you feel? How do you feel? Doesn't it feel like, you know what? Everything is going to be okay. Everything will work out. I don't have to worry about this right now. I can just be in this state of peace. Don't you feel or haven't you seen that in your own life where 
suddenly a solution will pop up. Suddenly somebody will reach out and be like, wow, okay, this is exactly what I needed. Suddenly something will open up when you're in that state. But when you're in a state of anxiety and fear and frustration, like things just feel like it's going downhill and downhill and downhill, doesn't it? That's the distinction I want you to make. But on the law of attraction level, whatever your frequency is, is what will come back to you. This is also physics. I'm not going to go into that in this particular episode. At some point, I'll cover that. But I'm inviting you to ponder upon this. What are you focused on? How does it make you feel? How, what are your thoughts that connect that are connected to those feelings? And is that working for you? Can you imagine shifting that? Can you imagine coming to this place of like, all right, I'm just, if nothing, even just accepting, I'm feeling this way right now. And that's it. This is the only thing I can focus on, which is like, all right, I'm here. I'm here. And it's okay. Even if you cannot see the light at the end of the tunnel, can you just say, all right, you know what? I'm okay with feeling the way I am. This will pass, which it will. That's the fact. Everything always changes. You know, this is a digression, but this is the fact. Even the blood in your body changes every 24 hours. Nothing is permanent. Everything is changing. This moment is all you have. So can you just stay with that? Focus on accepting where you are and focus on the state of peace and well-being. And when your attention is on well-being and inner peace, your outer circumstances will start to change as well. Because that's the vibration you're putting out into the world, isn't it? And that, I, that vibration will attract more of what you want. You know, I've given this analogy of a tuning fork. Like when you have a tuning fork vibrating at a particular frequency, you bring another tuning fork close to it, it starts vibrating at that same frequency. Our thoughts, emotions are very much in that same thing like a tuning fork. Whatever you're vibrating, wherever you are, is what will bring more and more of that back to you. So the takeaway for you from this episode is make well-being, make the state of peace your baseline, no matter what's happening. When you are facing difficult circumstances, which we all will, and even if it's just an interpretation, is sometimes life throws you random curveballs. We can't stop that. But what you have choice over is how you decide to respond or react to it. And if you can allow yourself to just take a deep breath and just say, okay, I'm feeling this way. Okay, this is happening. And just starting with that, even if you cannot change how you feel or think or like get to that state of well-being and peace, starting with that acceptance I love that phrase, radical acceptance. Like I've said before in the previous episode, I learned about that from Tara Brock. And I love that the radical acceptance is something so peaceful about it because it tells you I don't need to change anything. I just have to accept where I am. And that's the ultimate form of surrender, isn't it? And when you can live from that place of like, okay, everything is okay, no matter what. And guys, this is a practice that's every day. Everyday practice. It's not easy. It's not easy. And it is by no means, this path is not easy. But what I'm inviting you to do and think is think outside the box. Think outside where you are. I have to practice this every day. I'm not immune to it. I'm on the same path as you all. Maybe a few steps ahead, maybe a few steps back. I don't know. But whatever it is, I'm on this path with you. I have to practice this as much as you do. But as you practice, what you will start to notice is that it becomes easier. It becomes more of the default. It becomes like taking a breath. It becomes more like, all right, I don't have to do this. I can come back to this. You know, I love this quote by Eckhart Tolle. It summarizes everything that we've talked about so far. I hope I'm saying his last name. I can never figure out how to say his last. Is it Eckhart Tolle or Eckhart Tolle? I do not know. <laughs> if you know, please let me know. Um, I think it's Eckhart Tolle. You find peace 
not by rearranging the circumstances in your life, but by realizing who you are at the deepest level. I'm going to repeat that again. You find peace not by rearranging circumstances in your life, but by realizing who you are at the deepest level. And at our deepest level, guys, at our core, what are we? What are you and I? We are peace. We are love. I know it sounds so... For some of you, you may classify that as new agey or woo, but that is the reality, that is the truth, which is we are just pure love, we are just joy, we are peace. And when you can know that, everything starts to feel okay immediately now, right? So here's my invitation to you. Stop acting from your circumstances now. Fall back on being the person you want to be. And that's your next takeaway. Who do you want to be in this situation? Do you want to be that anxious and angry and frustrated person when you're dealing with the circumstances beyond your control? Or would you like the identity of a resourceful person, a person who's like, I can figure this out, a person who's peaceful? A person who's like, I am just going to figure this out. Everything is going to be okay. Everything is figure outable, like Marie Forleo says. And that's something I, I often find myself talking to my clients about. But here's the thing. You know, they're already living from that place, many of them, because they are very successful. And if you look at any successful person around you, you will start to notice that they do not live from circumstances. They're always in that space of, I know I can get solutions. I, I'm resourceful. I know what to do next. Even if I don't know what that next is, I know the next will come to me. Yeah, highly successful people didn't get to where they are today by just, pardon my friend, sitting on their ass and and, and just being in their circumstances. I rarely swear, guys. I rarely do. But sometimes when I get passionate, I might say some words like this. So I really hope your kids are not listening. (laughs) Um, So here's my takeaway for you. I have two takeaways for you. Please write in your journal that you're dedicating to this podcast. Make peace and well-being your baseline. And the second one is, who do you want to be in those difficult circumstances that probably you will encounter in your life? Resourceful, loving, peaceful? Or how do you want to be? How do you want to show up? So that's it for you guys. Next week, I have something really fun. Well, it's kind of fun, but it's also, I love this topic because so many of my clients deal with that. And I've also been in that category for a long time. It's all about overthinking. So I almost wanted to title it Overthinkers Anonymous. (laughs) I don't think such a thing exists, but that's what we're going to be talking about. I don't know the exact name of the title, but the theme is going to be about overthinking. If you're following me on social media and if you've noticed any of my Instagram stories, I was doing some work. My son came, my six-year-old came and joined me and he was like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm working. And then he started to tell me what he thought I was, what my work is. He was, he was taking a stab at what my work was. So he said, I help people overthink. This is what he told me. (laughs) And I said, I help people not to overthink. (laughs) So that was how it was inspired. He really thought I help people overthink, which is really funny. This is the same kid I had such a hard time with. (laughs) Oh, goodness. It's laughable now. So thank you for tuning into this another amazing episode. I love making these episodes for you guys. It's such a a pleasure for me because I get to live my dharma in helping transformation happen for you. And I know that these episodes are very powerful because 
they're, they're, they're small nuggets that you can take and put to use right away, isn't it? And I would love to know on a, on a lighter note, where do you listen to these episodes from? Do you listen to them when you're walking or, or cooking or doing things? Or how do you listen to them? I'm really curious. You know, and if you've, again, like followed me on Insta stories, you might have seen that I record all my episodes in my hubby's closet. So it's kind of fun to just see where, where do you listen to them? And I would love to know. Like for me, I often like listening to podcasts from when I'm cooking or cleaning or especially when I'm working out. Oh, here's another very quick nugget for you. And then I am going to sign off for sure. So... Research has demonstrated that when you are working out or some kind of physical activity, your brain releases certain chemicals that makes you absorb information very quickly and in the most effective, profound ways. So this is a great way to listen to podcasts, whatever podcast you listen to. Listen to it when you're working out now. And that is pretty transformational. So just wanted to share that fun nugget with you. And as always, I'm so grateful, grateful for you. And if you, again, can leave a review for me, I would so appreciate that because it is going to help reach so many more people. And I know you like helping people, too. So please leave a review. And I always like to reciprocate, so I will send you a gift card as well. So email my team, support at padmaali.com with a screenshot of your review. I did not know that, that it just disappears. When you take a, when you write a review and you send it off to iTunes, it just disappears for some time. So, <laughs> so take a screenshot, send it, and then you will get a gift card from me. Thank you so much, my friend. You can hear me next week, and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to this podcast. Make sure to tag me in Instagram at Padma Ali to share your takeaways from this episode. And lastly, share with your friends and family so they can also benefit from listening to this podcast. For more tips, go on to our website, PadmaAli.com and connect with me at the next episode. Take care. Bye.